Hi guys, welcome to Code Bashers. So guys, in this particular video, I will be discussing today's Accenture coding questions. Okay, so two coding questions I will be discussing, and both of these coding questions were asked today only. That is on 25th November 2024. Okay, so guys, make sure that you're watching this video till the end because guys, believe me, that coding questions are getting repeated in Accenture hirings. Okay, in past also. Lot of Accenture coding videos I have posted on this channel. Okay, make sure that after watching this video, you watch the entire playlist of the Accenture coding questions because lot of coding questions do get repeated in the Accenture hiring. Okay, and guys, I will continue to make such videos for different different companies. So make sure to hit that like and subscribe button for this channel and do hit that bell icon also so that you get the notification for all the videos we are posting. And guys, do join this Telegram group. This Telegram group is dedicated for 2025 batch students. Okay, so the link of this Telegram group you will find in the description box as well as in the i button. So guys, let's start this video and do hit that like and subscribe button before moving ahead. Okay, so two coding questions I will be discussing. First, the question, then the approach, and then the code part of this question. So the first question is the function accepts two positive integers r and a unit and a positive integer array of size n as its argument. R represents the number of rats present in an area. Unit is the amount of food each rat consumes, and ith element of the array represents the amount of food present in i plus one house number, where zero is less than equal to i. So what you have to find out here, you will have to find find the total number of house that will be required required to fulfill. Fulfill the hunger of rats. Okay. Let's just understand this with the help of an example. So what it is saying? See, you have R number of rats. Unit the amount of food each rat requires. Okay. And a positive integer array representing that. Okay. In which house how much unit of food is present? There is a road uh, note also. Return minus one if the array is null. Return zero if the total amount of food from all the houses is not sufficient for all the rats. Let's just first understand with the help of example. So R represents the R represents the uh, number of rats. Two represents the amount of unit a particular rat requires. Okay. Eight represents total number of house in that area. Okay. And the ith element of this array represents how much unit of food is in there in the ith house. Okay. This house, this house, this house. Okay. Now output is four. Wow. Output is four. Let's just see. So total amount of food required by all the rats. So R into unit because this unit was number of uh, food required by single rat. So seven into two equal to fourteen. This is R. Now the how many houses? What you have to find? How many houses are required to fulfill this need? That is total food required by rats is fourteen. So how many houses are required to fulfill this need? So we will start from the beginning. So two plus eight plus three plus fifteen. If you will do it like this, so two plus eight is ten. Ten plus three is thirteen. Thirteen plus five is eighteen. Uh, okay, thirteen plus five is eighteen. So now, till this house, starting from the first house, till this house, total eighteen, total eighteen amount of food is already there. So what is our total requirement? The total requirement is fourteen. So how many houses are required? So four houses are required to fulfill this need. Okay, now why not the Oh, one house. So first, see, first we will do in the first house. So total amount of food is two. Okay. Next we'll do in the second house. Total amount of food will be two plus eight, ten. Okay, two plus eight, ten. So can two houses fulfill the need? No. The need is fourteen. So two houses cannot fulfill the need. Now we'll go to the third house. So third house is total food is ten plus three, thirteen. So can three houses fulfill this entire requirement? Answer is no. Next we'll go to the fourth house. Now the total becomes. Thirteen plus five, eighteen. So now can four houses fulfill the requirement of fourteen? Answer is yes. So therefore, total four houses are required to fulfill the need of the rats. Okay. Now there are some notes given that return zero if the total amount of food from all the houses is not sufficient for all the rats. It's simple. That total amount of food is if total amount of food required by the rats is greater than the sum of the array, then return zero. Simple. Return minus one if the array is empty. I hope now the question is clear to you. The code is also straightforward. There is nothing much in the approach. So now let's just quickly move towards the coding part of this particular question. Okay. 
I have written in this uh, in the Java, okay. But you can write in any language, C plus plus Python or Java also, okay. So first, <clears throat> see, we have to take four things as input: number of rats, unit of food required by each rat, total number of elements in the array, then the ele elements of the array. So this is how we have taken the input, okay. Now we are calling a function. So first of all, if our array is null, return zero. I uh, okay. Return zero if array is null, but here it says return minus one. So sorry, return minus one if array is null. Next is total food required by the rats is r into units. I have already told you. Now this particular for loop is required to calculate that okay, how many houses are required? How many houses are required to fulfill the total amount of foods with the rat? So we are doing at every step we are doing sum plus equal to array of i, and similarly we are doing count plus plus. That is the number of houses required. So at any point, if the sum current sum is greater than equal to total food required, we are simply breaking out of here. Okay. Now after the loop ends, if our sum is less than the total food required, we are simply returning zero. Okay. Why? Because total houses, the food in total houses is less than the total food required. So we are simply returning zero. Otherwise, we are returning count here. Let's just see with the help of the simple example. This only that we have taken as input. We are simply running this statement, and answer should come out to be four. Okay. Now let's just see total food requirement was 14. Now let's just just pass only three houses, okay? With total food in them is equal to 13. So here the answer should be zero because total amount of food available will be 13, but the rats require food of 14 units. So here the output should be zero. That is the requirement cannot be fulfilled. Okay? I hope now this particular coding question is clear to you. If you, it is still not clear to you, it has been repeated from in past also. So make sure to watch this uh, video till here again. Now let's just quickly move towards the second question of this video, okay? And if you have not joined this Telegram group till now, please do join it because this is dedicated for 2025 batch students, okay? And do hit that like and subscribe button for this channel for future updates. So guys, now let's move towards the second question. Okay, so guys, on our top mid page of Code Bashers, we have Accenture exam preparation material for 2025 batch students, okay? So it is available individually also, and it is available in a package also. That is clubbed with TCS and QT exam slash interview cracker. Okay. So let's just discuss what what we have in the Accenture exam preparation material. Okay. So in this particular preparation material, we have the previous year questions. Okay. Previously asked questions for all the sections. If you will see here, you will find total seven sections that are coming in Accenture. Whether it is English ability, critical reasoning and abstract reasoning. Common application in MS Office, pseudo codes, network security and cloud coding questions which are previously asked in Accenture. So all these sections we have previous year questions, questions, options, and correct answers are there. For every section, if you will look carefully, you will find that okay, hundred plus questions, MCQ questions with question options, correct answers are there. Okay, coding also sixty plus questions are there. We are keep on trying to add more and more questions that are recently asked. So this particular Accenture exam preparation material is you can say updated material. Okay, so if you are interested in preparing or practicing before your exams, okay, because see in Accenture lot of uh, questions are getting repeated for all the for all the sections. Okay, I'm not going into that. But if you feel like that this particular product can help you, okay, for preparation for your exam or to like see that what type of questions are getting asked in different different subjects, because I know. Common application in MS Office and Network Security and Cloud, you will find most difficult in finding the resources. So we have clubbed from different sources into a single place, and we are giving it at a very nominal price of rupees ninety nine. The access of these no uh, these particular preparation material is for the lifetime. If you are interested in this particular notes or uh, in this particular material, you can see two hundred six people have already bought it. If you are interested, you think that okay, this will help you. The links are in the description box or uh, or in the pinned comment. Do check them out. Okay. So now let's move towards the second question of this video. Okay, so guys, the second question is again. It's on the simple side. Find out whether a number is magical or not. Okay, so <clears throat> yeah. So first of all, how, when a number is magical, so you will be given you will be given input as n. Now you will have to find from one to n. See, n is five. N is five. One to n will be one, two, three, four, five. So you have to find that. Okay, these five numbers are given to you. You will have to find how many of these numbers. Are magical. Now, what are a magic? What is a magical number? A number is magical if 
first convert that number to binary replace all the zeros with one and replace all the ones with two in the binary string calculate sum of all digits in the binary string resultant must be an odd number so see the ask here is very simple you will be given n okay let's suppose n is 5 now you will be taking all the numbers from 1 to n in this case 1 to 5 you will be taking so 1 2 3 4 5 okay every number every number you will first convert that number into the binary form okay once it has been converted into the binary form what you will have to do you will have to replace all the zeros with one all the ones with two that is this step see here one binary of one is this convert to two because all the ones have been replaced to two okay now now once you have done this conversion calculate the sum of all the digits in the binary string so now what is the sum here sum is two only so two is even so therefore it is not a magical number it is not a magical number why because the number must be odd after summation so it is not a uh, magical number next is 2 binary of 2 is 10 convert to convert to 2 1 after above transformation sum is 3 2 plus 1 is 3 so this is odd so this is the magical number so this is magical number here similarly goes for the 3 4 and 5 just convert to binary form do the conversions 0 to 1, 1 to 2. Okay. Then add both all the digits here. 2 plus 2, 4. Okay. Then it is, if it is coming out to be even, it is not a magical number. If it is coming out to be odd, then it is a magical number. This is not a magical number. This is not a magical number. This is a magical number. So how many from 1 to and how many magical numbers we had? We had 2 only. So therefore the output is 2. It is that simple. I hope now this, see, this question has also been repeated. So it is very straightforward it's very easy okay so now i hope the question is clear to you now let's just quickly move towards the coding part of this question we will do step by step so what we are doing here in count equal to zero that it will store how many magical numbers are there we are iterating from i equal to one till i less than equal to n okay now this is the entire logic that i have just described you that first convert to the binary then if the current number is zero convert it into one if the current number is one convert it to two and alongside just keep on adding into the sum variable okay just keep on adding into the sum variable and after that if you will find that okay this is this is the if it is the odd number we are doing count plus plus that is magical number plus plus and in the end we are simply returning count i hope now this thing is clear to you this is the simple logic of converting into binary making the conversions from 0 to 1 1 to 2 adding it alongside okay adding it alongside and in the end just checking whether it is an odd number or not if it is an odd number incrementing the count plus plus and in the end returning the count let's just see with the help of example so 5 is here let's just run it okay so answer should be 2 that 2 magical numbers exist let's suppose it's 6 uh, let's just see for 6 so i think 6 if we will let's let just quickly calculate for 6 whether 6 is a magical number or not so for 6 if i tell you Okay, so 6 converted to binary. What is the binary of 6? It will be 110. Okay, then perform the operations 2, 2, 1 because 1 will be converted to 2, 0 will be converted into 1. 2, 2, 1. Then do the addition 2 plus 2 plus 1, that is 5. Is 5 odd? Um, yes, 5 is odd. So therefore, it is a magical number. So in this case, answer should be 3. So yeah, answer is coming out to be 3. So I hope now this particular question is also clear to you. And again, I'm telling you if you have not joined the Telegram group till now, please join it. and do hit that like and subscribe button for this channel because we will continue to make such videos for more and more companies okay so yeah and guys before closing this video do check the extension exam preparation material as i have just told you in the middle of the video and all the uh, recently asked questions for all the sections in extension exams are here lot of questions do get repeated in Accenture. so this particular material can be your one way solution for your preparation okay so we have clubbed from different different resources and placed here so if you are interested in buying this particular material the links are in the description box as well as in the i button uh, and the pin comment and it is at a very nominal price of rupees 99 do check them out